Hello, I am Terry Shea from the University of California, Berkeley. At California, I had the opportunity to coordinate the offense and specifically develop the position of our quarterbacks. It is this position that we are going to cover today in our presentation of the making of a quarterback. Quarterback is a unique position in football. It is a position of strategy and quick decisions. No other position demands such a burden of responsibility, such a desire to excel, or such respect by his teammates. In a quarterback candidate, we look for certain characteristics. The first characteristic being responsibility. That's the ability to move our football team and your capability as a quarterback to generate within the team an objective to win. The second category is the desire to excel, the willingness to work many hours in improving your skills. Making the effort to win is what the game of football is all about. And our third category is teammate respect, your leadership with your teammates. A teammate must respect your human decency and look to you in moments of pressure. The natural ability of a quarterback candidate is oftentimes of less importance than the mental requirements. However, the more physical skills you possess, the better chance you have of becoming a successful quarterback. To begin the instruction, I would like to divide the workout into two phases. The first phase being our off-season conditioning preparation, and the second phase being the actual skill development of the quarterback position with specific drills. Now, let's go on to the first phase. Our quarterback is Troy Taylor. Our first exercise that we use with the quarterback is developing foot quickness. Troy will demonstrate a quick feet drill that can be done simply by finding a spot on the field that uh, gives you a straight line. Troy, let's demonstrate the quick feet drill. As you can see, Troy's objective here is to try to stay on both sides of the line as he crosses over. And the second drill that we try to incorporate in terms of developing the quickness of foot is the side straddle. Troy will bounce from one side of the line to the other, straddling the line, developing a, a, a strengthening of both right and left feet. Now Troy will stay on the other side of the line and now use his left foot. This enhances his, his foot control as well as his foot quickness. The third quickness drill we, we work on is the actual, what we call the box drill. Troy will demonstrate now the four square box bounce from one side to the other with both feet. The objective of our foot quickness drill with the quarterback is to develop lateral quickness and the ability to push off his foot as he separates from the center after the snap of the ball. We will now go on to our second exercise, which incorporates the use of a medicine ball to develop the quarterback's upper body and particularly his throwing strength from the torso. Joining Troy for our medicine ball drill is our receiver, Brian Bedford. The two athletes will stand shoulder to shoulder and rotate the medicine ball in one direction to develop the upper body strength that a quarterback needs in passing the football. Now we'll reverse the action and develop the other side of Troy's upper body as he passes the medicine ball from one side to the next. Our next drill we use is a drill that incorporates a smaller medicine ball. This drill will help strengthen the throwing mechanics of our quarterback. To facilitate this drill, it is necessary to have a smaller size medicine ball. This allows the quarterback to actually grip the medicine ball and throw it as if it were a football. Now Troy will demonstrate the actual mechanics of this drill. It is important that as you work with a medicine ball of this size, that you continue to work the proper mechanics the follow-through of the arm, the follow-through of the hips, 
the ball actually strengthens the throwing arm and does not detract from the actual throwing motion. Emphasizing the physical health of our quarterback, we spend a great deal of time strengthening his muscle groups. The next exercise we will demonstrate is the actual sit-up exercise that will help develop the abdominal muscles of our quarterback and strengthen his lower back. Troy is now demonstrating the actual sit-up exercise that he will do on a daily basis. The abdominal muscles are important to the consistent health of a quarterback. The strengthening of these muscles aids in the strengthening of the back. These two areas are extremely vulnerable for a quarterback when passing under instant contact. These exercises are done three days a week by our quarterbacks. But as you can see by the nature of our presentation, we will not be taking you into the weight room where the quarterback actually spends an additional amount of time during those three days preparing in terms of weight development, strength development, and cardiovascular work. In addition to the conditioning drills we have demonstrated, here is a complete list of conditioning drills our quarterbacks will work on three times a week. You should plan to spend one hour and 20 minutes per workout with each exercise requiring a maximum effort. It is helpful to use a chart which allows you to trace your weekly progress. We will now go on to phase two of our presentation, which is the actual skill development of the quarterback position. The first drill that I'd like to present to you is the warm-up drill that our quarterback will use. He merely takes a position on the turf with one knee up and one knee down, and he will now throw the football to his teammate who stands only 10 yards from the distance that he's throwing. This is a warm-up drill that we use for our quarterback. The objective of this drill is to warm up the quarterback's arm as well as to strengthen his throwing motion. The quarterback can change his position by putting the other leg up and this will now strengthen his throwing motion if he were forced to throw on the run with either leg being the primary passing foot. To fully strengthen the throwing mechanics of the upper body, a quarterback can put both knees on the ground and now throw from his, from his position that is demonstrated. Keep in mind that this drill can not only be used as a warm-up exercise, but functions as an excellent cool-down drill at the completion of a quarterback's workout. The knee down drill is an excellent way to warm your passing arm up. However, as you warm up, it is very important that you realize that most of your passes that you throw as a quarterback are thrown by moving your feet and delivering the football. So it is with this in mind that as you warm up, always attempt to move your feet as you warm the passing motion up. Troy will now demonstrate how we warm our quarterback up prior to a passing session. Notice that before he actually delivers the ball, he has taken the final step of his setup motion by crossing his feet over and throwing the ball and assimilating a game-like condition. By moving your feet upon every throw that you make, you are establishing that necessary rhythm that a quarterback must have to properly execute the throwing mechanics. Another warm-up drill that we use is developing the touch of a quarterback's passing. We position our quarterback approximately 10 to 15 yards from the actual goal post. The object of this drill is for the quarterback to throw the football as it barely crosses over the crossbar of the goalpost. Troy will now demonstrate the drill as we use in a warm-up situation. It is important that the quarterback follow through with his pass on every repetition. As you can see, the ball travels over the crossbar, and the closer the ball travels over the crossbar, 
the more touch the quarterback has on the ball. Oftentimes, this situation comes up for a quarterback when he must drop the ball over the coverage of a defender and into a specific area of the pass pattern. But it also enhances his warm up. He can warm his arm up as well as defining a specific skill that is needed in a game like condition. The touch drill can also incorporate the quarterback throwing on the run. Troy will demonstrate throwing the ball on the run as he squares his shoulders up to drop the ball barely over the crossbar. This situation comes up when a quarterback has moved out of the pocket or is throwing the ball on the run where he must drop the ball over a defender into a given area for the pass pattern to be successful. Remember now that you want to keep the passing distance within 15 yards from the goalpost. And the closer the ball passes over the crossbar, the more effective your touch is. To make sure the drill is properly set, you need to make sure the catcher positions himself five yards from the crossbar. This will require the quarterback to touch the ball barely over the crossbar into a hole in the coverage. After the quarterback has thoroughly warmed up, we now advance to a drill that encompasses his footwork, his setup ability, and his follow through of the pass. Whenever you work on a drill where it includes his setup ability, you want to try to always include a center to actually create the snap exchange. Our center joining us today is Brad Jackman. If you don't always have access to a center, sometimes you can find an extra player around, such as a kicker, to take the place of the, of the center snap. We will now work on the set, step, and throw drill, which is an excellent drill for a quarterback to establish rhythm, proper throwing mechanics, and proper follow through. The rhythm part of the drill can be enhanced by the coach actually verbalizing the set, step, and throw part of the drill. For example, as the quarterback takes the ball from center, the coach can say set, step, and throw. Now we'll speed up the mechanics to give us a more game-like condition. Set, step, throw. Notice the follow through that the quarterback comes through with the delivery. That is the, one of the most important phases of this drill. Set, step, throw. Some coaching points. Always remember to coach the quarterback to step toward the target with his lead foot. Again, emphasize with the quarterback the set, step, and throw rhythm. Vocalize this phrase during each repetition. Remember to try to use a center for the ball exchange. And to prevent overstriding, coach the quarterback to take a short guide step prior to the transfer of the weight from the back foot to the front foot. This forces the quarterback's hips to turn stronger and allows for the proper follow through. Position your catcher at a medium range. Do not overtax your quarterback's arm with the many repetitions of the set, step, and throw drill. Our quarterback will do anywhere from 15 to 20 reps of this one drill. The next drill we use to work with the quarterback's drop is what we call the hitch drill. This drill puts the quarterback at a five-step drop relationship where he now has his primary receiver covered, and he must hitch up into the pocket to give himself added protection and keep his rhythm. 
When using the five-step drop technique, the quarterback does not have a lot of room to hitch up into the pocket. Therefore, one to one and a half hitches can be enough to make the drill effective and give you a game-like condition. Many times the timing between the quarterback and the receiver is interrupted by defensive coverage. This situation requires the quarterback to hold onto the ball for a longer period and still maintain a passing rhythm. This drill is designed to teach the quarterback to maintain a balanced passing position without overstriding as the receiver clears his route. When positioning the catcher for this drill, it is important to keep him at a medium range. This drill emphasizes the footwork and the foot movement of the quarterback and does not emphasize his actual velocity on the ball, which again would lead to overtaxing the quarterback's arm. So keep your catcher at a medium range, starting him in the middle for the quarterback to hitch into the middle of the throwing area. Then you can move your catcher to one side or the other. This forces your quarterback to set his lead step toward his target after he hitches. Make sure you get equal amount of repetitions to both sides. Five to the middle, five to the left, and five to the right is an adequate number to make this drill profitable for your quarterback. The actual hitching of the quarterback is the key part of the, of the drill itself. You will notice that the quarterback hitches with his back foot first. This keeps his feet in a distributed position, which allows the quarterback to always keep his feet under the throwing motion. Now let's take a slow motion look at the quarterback's hitch step as he sets his feet. By hitching with the back foot first, this prevents the quarterback from overstriding as he prepares to throw the ball. It also prevents the quarterback from dropping the ball to his hip, which is a bad habit prior to the delivery. We will now take a look at a common error made by a quarterback when he's forced to hitch up into the pocket. Notice how the quarterback hitches with his front foot first. When this happens, the quarterback often begins to overstride and drop the ball. That's why it's so important to hitch with your back foot first when hitching up into the pocket. The next drill is our avoid the rush drill. This situation occurs when the quarterback feels pressure from the defense coming up through the middle of the pass protection pocket. The quarterback must now avoid the rush by sliding to his left or right side but making sure that he's in a passing position. The quarterback will react to the coach's signal. The coach positions himself so the quarterback can see the coach and his signal. Notice that it's important that your quarterback react quickly to the signal after the initial setup. This assimilates a true game-like condition from actually attempting to avoid a pass rusher. After the avoidance and after the movement, the quarterback must always remember to reset his feet before making the actual throw. The avoid the rush drill keeps the quarterback within the confines of the pass protection. However, there's a situation that makes the quarterback leave the pocket. And in this situation, we teach the quarterback our escape drill. Troy will now demonstrate the setup and then feeling pressure from his left side will spin out of the pocket and leave the pocket protection area. The most important part of this escape drill is for the quarterback to sense that pressure from his backside sets and then spins out of the pocket, gaining some ground to give himself a chance to square his shoulders up and attack the line of scrimmage. The next drill is a drill we use to develop the quarterback's peripheral vision. This drill we call the pop-up drill. The quarterback can take a five or seven step drop 
reading for the receiver to pop up and show his hands. Troy will take a five-step drop, read the receiver who pops up, and then deliver the ball. Troy must learn to reset his feet and point his lead foot toward the pop-up receiver. Either catcher can be the pop-up man. The quarterback should look straight ahead as he retreats into the pocket. However, keeping both receivers in his vision. Once the pop-up catcher shows himself, the quarterback then will set his feet toward that receiver and deliver the ball. Our next drill is a drill that we use for the quarterback to reset his feet. As the quarterback retreats into the pocket and looks upfield to his primary receivers, oftentimes these receivers are well covered. The quarterback then must reset his feet and throw the pass to his outlet receiver. Troy will now demonstrate our reset the feet drill. Troy will take a five-step drop. As he looks upfield and studies the coverage, he then resets his feet and throws the ball to his outlet receiver. You start with your quarterback approximately 15 yards from your catcher. It is important that the quarterback allow himself time to study the coverage upfield, whether it's over the middle or off to a side, and then reset his feet. When practicing these drills, make certain that the quarterback works both sides. This will develop the quarterback's ability to throw not only to his stronger side, but to the side that he least throws to. In this case, you notice our quarterback is now setting at five steps and throwing out to his left, to his outlet receiver. After the quarterback has had time to warm his arm, we now have a chance to go into the long pass drill. This pass is one of the most important passes in football, but it needs to be thrown with a different trajectory by the quarterback's arm action. We will now take a look at Troy throwing the long pass off of a five-step drop. The quarterback must throw this pass with a high trajectory. Some quarterbacks will throw both their long and short passes with the same trajectory. We teach our quarterbacks to use a higher trajectory when throwing the long pass. The ball is thrown with a high arc and per distance. It is paramount that the quarterback execute his position with the proper technique and skill. If a quarterback is to excel in his position, he must make sure that this technique becomes second nature in his performance. Several areas we'll take a look at in terms of technique development are the quarterback's stance once he reaches the line of scrimmage, the actual center quarterback exchange, and then from that point, we will evaluate the quarterback's drop back technique on the drop back passing game. Now let's take a look at the quarterback's stance. Our quarterback now assumes the proper stance as he approaches the center for the center ball exchange. The feet should be comfortably spread and approximately armpit apart. The quarterback should keep the feet inside the center's width with the weight evenly distributed on the balls of his feet. The quarterback's knees are bent comfortably, but not strained. The quarterback's hips drop to a comfortable position, but he remains as tall as his center will permit. The quarterback's arms and shoulders are bent slightly forward with the shoulders even with the center's hip, elbows slightly flexed. The quarterback's head and eyes are straight ahead, and as he calls out the signals, he may look from side to side, reading the defense. He remains balanced until the last possible instant before the snap. And then the transfer of weight will take place once the ball is snapped to prevent false stepping. A quarterback should always reflect a confident attitude when he's up underneath the center. But the most important thing is for the quarterback to be consistent at every snap. The center quarterback exchange is our next technique that we're going to take a close look at. It is the responsibility of both players to make sure the snap is successful, just as it is the responsibility of both players when the snap is unsuccessful. Both players need to work as a team 
on the successful exchange. Now, let us take a close look at this exchange. As the quarterback approaches the line of scrimmage, he assumes a proper stance behind his center. It's important for the quarterback to press his right hand firmly against the center's crotch. This hand pressure gives the center a target and also makes the quarterback's hand follow the center's tail as he charges out. Right hand is the platform for a right-handed throwing quarterback. The left-hander may end up putting the left hand as his platform. The quarterback bends the right elbow slightly. This also helps the quarterback follow the center's path after the snap. Now let's take a look at the exchange in slow motion. Notice that the quarterback keeps hand pressure on the center's crotch until the ball is in his hands. The quarterback's hands must follow the center forward. The ball must smack into the crease of the upper hand, ideally at a 45 degree angle. Then the quarterback gets the ball well up into both hands. Both hands should be just back of the middle of the ball. As the quarterback receives the snap, he immediately pulls the ball into his stomach area, which we call his third hand. Our third area of quarterback technique is the drop back technique that the quarterback must use in his three step, five step, or seven step drop. Today, we will demonstrate the three and five step drop that we teach here at Cal. To eliminate false stepping by the quarterback, we teach the quarterback to separate with his left foot. This separation step is not used in the counting of the three and five step drop technique. Troy will now demonstrate the separation step from the center. He separates at a distance of about 12 inches. This will eliminate any false stepping by the quarterback. Now Troy will demonstrate the three-step drop. This is used in conjunction with the quick passing game. The three-step drop should allow the quarterback to reach a depth of four to five yards from the line of scrimmage. We utilize this drop on the quick passing attack. Troy will now demonstrate a five-step drop, which should allow the quarterback to reach a depth of seven to seven and a half yards from the line of scrimmage. After the separation step is taken, the quarterback then takes a long step to give him that depth he needs to get back to seven and a half yards. Now let's take a look at the three different techniques we've covered in slow motion. First, the separation step. You'll notice the quarterback has the opportunity upon this step to keep his shoulders square to the line of scrimmage. This allows the quarterback to make any extra check of a linebacker or defender that is necessary upon the success of the play, as well as eliminating the false stepping that oftentimes hurts quarterbacks on their drop back technique. The three step drop allows the quarterback to get set on the quick passing game and deliver the football within a confined period of time. It is important that the quarterback in using the three step drop gets his depth to prevent the quarterback from throwing too close to the line of scrimmage. That's why we use the four and a half yard marker for the quarterback's setup area. With the five step drop, the quarterback needs to get to a point seven to seven and a half yards from the line of scrimmage. This allows for his protection to know exactly where the setup point is for the quarterback on a five step drop. If you're using a seven step drop technique, that should get you at a depth of nine to nine and a half yards in order to set up and properly throw the football from the seven step drop area. Having completed the on the field skill development for a quarterback, it is just as important for a quarterback to understand some of his off the field skill development. Specifically, a quarterback is asked on every snap to make a decision with the football. And when it involves the passing game, his decision is oftentimes based on how much knowledge he has in terms of analyzing 
the defensive coverage that he must throw into. Let us now go to the board and take a look at the principles of reading pass coverages. The starting point for reading any coverage is based on the quarterback's read prior to the snap of the ball. The most basic read that a quarterback can make in analyzing a coverage is the read that the quarterback makes on our free safety or the strong safety that we have entitled the rover. These two players can oftentimes tell a quarterback what type of coverage he will see as the play unfolds. The other key defender in the quarterback's ability to read coverages is oftentimes the weak outside linebacker. A combination of these three players will oftentimes give the quarterback his answer as he retreats to throw the, throw the football upfield. For example, let's take a very simple concept in reading defenses. If the quarterback were to keep his vision on the free safety's movement, it will often tell him 90% of the time or higher what kind of coverage he will receive from the weak side outside linebacker. For example, if the free safety drops to the deep middle of the field, a high percentage of the time, this will mean that the weak outside linebacker is responsible for covering some route that the quarterback may wish to throw to the weak side of his formation. Let us take a very simple basic pass play and see how that ties in to the defensive coverage and the quarterback's ability to pick apart that coverage. For example, if we wanted to bring our wide receiver who we entitle the X on a simple out pattern and our tight end to work through the middle and hook up in the middle area of the field and the left half back to come out of the backfield on his route, we can now see how a quarterback can base his decision as to where to throw the football purely by seeing the movement of the free safety on his first two steps after the snap of the ball. If the free safety were to retreat to the deep middle of the field, then the quarterback now realizes that the weak outside linebacker is responsible for taking away the route to the quarterback's weak side. So if the quarterback, as he drops back and checks the free safety and notices that the free safety drops to the deep middle, then it's the quarterback's ability now to realize that if he wishes to complete the pass to his X receiver, then he now must focus his eyes on the drop of the weak outside linebacker, knowing that because of these two combinations, he will have the weak outside linebacker attempting to defend the out, the out area. From that point on, he can make his decision whether to throw the pass to his X receiver, who would then be his first choice. If that is well covered by the outside linebacker, then he can bring his eyes and focus back on his secondary receiver, who now is the tight end hooking up over the middle of the field. If that were to be covered by the drop of the inside linebacker from either side, then his third choice in the pass pattern would be to drop the pass to his outlet receiver, who is a back coming out of the backfield. Earlier in our presentation, we had a chance to see a quarterback drill that depicted this exact technique that the quarterback is now faced with. If, in fact, his number one receiver were covered and his number two receiver were covered, then he would merely have to reset his feet and drop the ball off to his third choice, who is his outlet receiver at this point. That was our reset drill that we had a chance to review earlier in the presentation. Having seen a very simple principle in, in reading coverages, I want to make sure that the quarterback realizes as he studies a coverage, his first responsibility is to read the coverage prior to the snap of the ball. Therefore, a quarterback can 
sometimes decide what type of coverage he will see before the snap ever occurs. And this is simply done by reading the alignment of the defensive perimeter that he is being asked to attack on that particular play. However, reading the coverage prior to the snap is simply not enough. It is very important that the quarterback establish a decision in his mind before he actually sets to throw the ball upfield. If you recall earlier in our presentation, we concentrated on the five-step drop. The quarterback, in reading coverages, has to be able to come up with a decision before he con concludes that five-step drop technique. So let us take a look one more time at how a quarterback can arrive at that answer. As the quarterback opens on his separation step that we reviewed earlier, he now can take a good, strong look at the free safety and establish in his own mind by his second step in his drop back technique that the free safety will tell him what coverage he may have to see that, that particular play. For example, we already talked about the free safety dropping to the deep middle. That would tell the quarterback which underneath defender would be held responsible for trying to cover an out route or a wide passing route to his split side receiver. However, if the free safety now makes a movement away from the deep middle, this can now tell the quarterback that the outside receiver will be defended by the weak side corner rolling up from his position to attack that receiver and take away a route from the underneath position. So just merely by seeing the direction, oftentimes, of the free safety's movement, the quarterback can now reach an answer as to who will attempt to defend his weak side passing attack. Now, if we were to come out of a huddle and the play is dictating a strong side attack, where the quarterback has one, two, three possible choices in his pattern. The quarterback now focuses his attention not only on the free safety's movement, but the rover's movement as well. And with this in mind, he now can choose to deliver a pass to one of his three receivers to the strong side of the formation. If the free safety stays in a deep middle drop, then the quarterback now can assure himself that the rover, who is the strong safety, will now actually attempt to take away one of the two receivers to the strong side who are working upfield. For example, if we took a very simple pattern and we had a curl route run by the outside receiver and a curl route run by the inside receiver and an outlet route run by the back coming out of the backfield, the quarterback now, having realize that the free safety is going to cover the deep middle and the, the rover back now would now be held responsible for attempting to get underneath the wide receiver's route. With that in mind, the quarterback could now make his decision to throw to number one, number two, and number three. And if you'll keep in mind, a very important concept in reading coverages is the quarterback has to learn to not look at his own receivers as he drops back, but he is actually looking at the defender and playing the, the game off the defender and his movement. The quarterback can pick up his receivers in his peripheral vision. If you remember, earlier in the presentation, we presented a drill where the quarterback would drop back and then throw the pass to the receiver who popped up. The second phase of reading coverage by the quarterback is the ability of the quarterback to attack the underneath coverage. With this in mind, we have termed the drops of the underneath defenders as the buzz system. This is system is the deployment of the linebackers as they drop into their coverage zones. For example, the weak outside linebacker may be asked to drop to the outside area of the underneath zone as we look across the board horizontally. The inside linebacker may drop to this area of the underneath zones. This linebacker will drop accordingly and this linebacker
may be asked to put pressure on the quarterback. But now the rover, if in fact he is going to stay as an underneath defender, will drop into his zone. This system, we, we like to term as the buzz system. So for example, if a quarterback is attacking the underneath coverage of a pass defense, then he must then read the buzz system to give him his answer as to who to throw the football to for a high percentage pass. If the quarterback were asked to try to attack the weak side of a zone with some curl route by his wide receiver, then he would be asked to read the buzz system of those two linebackers to that side of the, of the pass pattern. With this in mind, a quarterback has to be able to study linebacker drops, not only in terms of width, but in depth. That will give him the answer as to whether he needs to throw underneath a linebacker or into a lane that a linebacker has vacated. The bus system affords the quarterback an immediate answer in terms of throwing the pass upfield or dropping the ball off to an outlet coming out of the backfield. Once again, the depth of the linebacker's drop is as important to study as the width of his drop as he works across the underneath zones horizontally. This is entitled our buzz system. So with these two combinations of principles of reading pass coverages, the quarterback then can either choose to use the free safety and the rover as his primary reading of the pass coverage, or he can choose to use the buzz system if, the, if indeed the pass has called for an underneath intermediate type pass pattern. With these two principles in mind, this gives any young quarterback an excellent starting point in reading coverages. In concluding our presentation, I would like to thank the three California football players who participated in the demonstrations today. Number 68, our center, Brad Jackman. Number 10, our wide receiver, Brian Bedford. And number 11, our quarterback, Troy Taylor. I would like to conclude by talking with the quarterbacks who are out there today. As a young quarterback, you must keep in mind that it is not where you begin in your development, but how far your development takes you toward your end result. The end product is a result of many hours of hard work and drills that will help develop your skill level to the point that you can be the most successful quarterback among the competition. But let me remind you that skill development is a result of hours and hours of work. For example, in our presentation earlier, we talked about phase one and phase two. The skill development in the phase two category that included all the drills and all the specific technique work would actually require you on a daily basis to throw the football no less than 150 times a day to complete such a workout. The end result is a very gratifying one, but you must be willing to put those hours in in order to improve your skill level. So it is apparent that, you, that if you wish to be an outstanding quarterback, it will take lots of practice. So quit sitting there and grab a ball and let's get humming. <laughs>